You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Very much looking forward to today's discussion. It's something which I come across these things periodically where it really piques my attention. And I know it's not necessarily a really new concept or groundbreaking stuff, but it's something that, you know, got my attention, as I said, and it's just something I want to dig into a bit more. And also, I appreciate that you have choices when it comes to what podcast to listen to for anxiety or anything else. Uh, I know when I look at my app on my phone, there's probably five podcasts which I listen to regularly uh, and sort of tune into and see when their latest episode is dropped and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so, yeah, if I'm on your top five or whatever, then... uh, you know, that that's uh, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Um, OK, news, updates. What's going on, Tim? Tell us a bit more. So uh, if you're brand new to the podcast, you can obviously go to anxietypodcast.com. Things on there haven't changed much for a while, but I'll be updating that uh, sometime soon with some new stuff. But you can see and search every episode I've ever done. There's an End Anxiety Toolkit. Make sure you get that because that gets you on my email list. So you'll then hear about other things that I'm up to, one of which I'm going to mention in a moment. Um, And there's also a five week to overcome anxiety course on there as well, which is a video course you can get. It's all on YouTube. Any problems finding anything, by the way, feel free to go to the contact page and send me a message, email or whatever you like. Or you can just fill out the form on there, I think, and it'll send me a message as well. Um, uh, Before I go on, I just want to say that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp, um, which is an ongoing sponsor of the show. And uh, yeah, BetterHelp is is online counseling. Essentially, um, they will, as you kind of go through, when you first go to their site, they will take you through uh, this exercise of deciding um, what you would like help with and where you're based and who you'd be a good fit with. And they'll try and then match you with a good uh, fit in terms of a counselor. You can start up in as, un- in as little as 24 hours. You can change if you don't like who you get the first time. So there's lots of flexibility in finding you the right therapeutic match. Um, so you can, yeah, you can change if you need to. They've got clients worldwide, so they're very used to different countries and, and kind of being from all over. Um, they can help with all sorts of things. So depression, stress, sleeping, trauma, family conflicts. We've all had a few of those. Um, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, etc. So all sorts of different stuff. It's all confidential. It's all professional. Um, and yeah, somebody online for you to connect with there. So um, they, I think they're helping now over a million people are helping uh, get in help from better help. So um, it's definitely something that's caught on. As a listener of the podcast, you get 10% off your first month by joining betterhelp.com slash anxiety podcast. That's betterhelp.com slash anxiety podcast. Okay. So yeah, the topic I was going to, um, I'm I not was going to, I am going to talk about today is um, things coming at a cost. And uh, that sounds a little bit uh, ominous, but it's not bad. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Before I get onto that, I want to give you a bit of a personal update. So I um, have been, yeah, continuing to, to be pretty busy. I've still got some work going on at my house here, which is, as I look out, is there's a, a digger machine in the front garden digging holes around the house we've been having the perimeter drains replaced which again is not something you ever think oh it's time to upgrade the old perimeter drains you just wait till they fail and uh, then you get them done so anyway now we're having it done which means they've dug a trench all around my house and uh, hopefully I think within the next week they probably will have finished so Let's keep our fingers crossed and uh, hopefully that progresses. I have uh, also been continuing with the 75 hard challenge and now we're up to day 50. It's day 50 today. So I'm two thirds of the way through the 75 hard challenge, which feels fabulous. It does feel like it's now a sort of new way of life, which is a bit odd, but I've sort of got used to so many of the things um, involved in the 75 hard that they just kind of become part of what you do every day and you don't even really think about it anymore you're like right drink my water which i have in front of me right now so i'll take a sip while i think about it 
I have to drink a gallon of water every day. So I got every time you see the bottle, you just got to crush a bit more. And now it doesn't feel like a big deal to get through. Whereas when I first started, that was certainly one of the things where I was like, there's no way I'm going to the toilet that much. But maybe my body's just adjusted. I don't know. Um, now, <laughs> what I wanted to share was in the last few days, it's been difficult. It's been hard. And I don't want to just share the good stuff. You know me, I share the bad stuff as well. So on, uh, I think I've, I think I've worked out what happened, but from Saturday night, from Saturday, last Saturday, now we're on Wednesday, Thursday, but on Saturday night, um, I uh, started getting the shivers, not in a good sort of Ed Sheeran way, but I started getting the shivers, like freezing, feeling, freezing cold um, and got into bed and wrapped myself up in the blankets and I just still absolutely freezing, like the tips of my fingers were freezing cold. Nothing was was particularly good. And I'd obviously been following the 75-hour protocol of drinking my water and doing my two workouts and stuff. Um, woke up on the Sunday, felt worse. Terrible stomach cramps, like just abdominal pain all over the place. So, um, And then, um, yeah, I won't go into detail about what, what goes on in terms of the number two department, but it wasn't a good situation to be in. So much so... Um, the other day when I was walking, doing my, one of my morning walks, I was walking down the hill. I was like, oh my God, I need to go to the toilet now. And I was like halfway from like 20 minutes from home. And yeah, I thought, right, I'll, I'll keep walking to the beach where there's a public toilet. Please let it be vacant or open or something. And luckily I got in there and I made it. I survived, but oh my God, that was a close call. Um <laughs> oversharing tim that's too much information anyway it's just it's just real life so anyway i've had some gastrointestinal discomfort let's put it that way as you can imagine all the things that go with that over the last few days felt very weak um sleep's been fine but i just felt pretty weak and uh because of the whole pandemic situation i you know immediately think oh is a side effect of covid so i went and got a covid test which involved me driving through and swishing water in my mouth and spitting it into a cup Got the results of that back. Negative for that. Um, so yeah, it turns out I probably had a good old fashioned stomach bug. But it is kind of interesting how these days you think everything could be, could be the COVID, but it's not. No vid, no vid COVID. Uh, so on we go. So anyway, today's the first day where I've started feeling a bit better, um, and uh, yeah, the stomach's not feeling quite as painful today. So through all this though. I've had to keep doing my stuff because I'm like, unless it's physically impossible, unless it's excruciatingly painful or I've got to go to the hospital or something like I'm having my appendix out or it's something bad, I'm not going to stop doing my two walks a day and my water and all the other stuff because I'm on day 50. I, just, I'm not, I don't want to go back nearly two months in time and start again. It would just be harsh. I mean, I'm, I suppose I would if I had to, but um, no. So anyway, I've managed to battle through. There's been a couple of days where I've had to slow down a bit because I've just felt, you know, when you, you know, it's like when you run and you get that kind of stitch or cramp in your stomach. I get that quite easily at the moment by walking fast and doing stuff. So I've continued to do my hill walks and all the rest of it. I just had to back off a little bit. I'll probably go to the gym later on today now that I'm clear of any anything sinister and I'll just uh, do my best to persevere. But that's kind of... Um, where I'm up to uh, from that point of view. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was, um, and as you know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, I used to do coaching a lot, as in uh, running groups. I've done retreats, which I love my retreats. Um, probably do that again when, I don't know, when things get back to normal. They're never going to get back to normal. This is it. It's been two years. Uh, anyway, probably do another retreat at some point. But um I I'm going to um I sent an email out earlier to see if anybody is up for some uh conversations and um I you know the stuff I really enjoy talking about I like talking about um helping people with anxiety I get a lot of good stuff from that uh, when I used to do it as a full-time job I think it became too much for me because I put so much pressure on filling my calendar and and maximizing the amount of calls I could do in a day. And I think I got a bit burnt out from that. So anyway, I'm taking another taking another run at it, but this time just very, very, uh, very, very cautiously uh, from the point of view that I'm going to open up some a few sessions uh, a month, maybe one or two a week. Um, they're only going to be half an hour at a time, so it's going to be short and concise and all the rest of it. Um, but they're going to be sessions when you can speak to me directly on the phone. We'll probably use Zoom or something, but it will be audio only. I'm not going to do video because it just 
requires more bandwidth and people then get distracted by the video. I like the audio as a concept. We're on audio right now. I don't record video. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to do some of these one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if it's something you're interested in, then make sure you're on my email list because that's where I'll be announcing it. You can go to anxietypodcast.com and sign up for any of the free tools and that gets you on the email list. I'll probably pop it in the Facebook group as well when I launch the calendar. Um, but yeah, essentially, I'm going to do some half-hour sessions, audio only. Um, and um, that'll be kind of how they go. And in terms of things that we can talk about, obviously, if you've got a question around your anxiety um, and specifically how that's going for you or what's triggering it, or you want me to help you kind of uncover some of the layers around where it may be, where it may be coming from or helping you with decisions you have to make for the future. These are all the things that I've discussed with people before. Again, I'm not a psychologist or a doctor um, or a psychiatrist, but I am somebody who's experienced it myself and I've made a lot of decisions in my life to get where I am today. And I, so I, I sort of go through my own experiences and, and give people a sounding board, um, to bounce ideas off of. And, you know, often it's about, you know, should I go for the job promotion or should I move location or should I change my relationship or should I get in better physical health or I'm thinking about this one thing and it's stuck in my head and how do I deal with it? So those are all the types of um, stuff that I get into on these calls. But also, as I put in the email today, I also often end up talking to people about business and sales and uh, nutrition and fat loss because I've done a lot of that myself. Um, and uh, yeah, just all those all of those different topics that I really enjoy talking about. I'm trying to think if there's anything else which I had on my list, but that probably covers most of it. Pretty much anything that I talk about on the podcast is fair game for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So if that's something you're interested in, um, send me an email. I'll add you to my list of interested parties. And then I'll be sending out at some point, I'll send out a calendar, um, which will give you the opportunity to book a session. There will be a charge for the calls um, for a couple of reasons. One is um, I'm going to you know, any funds I generate from this will be funneled back into the podcast and paying for the running of the podcast. Um, but also, <clears throat> and I may have talked about this before, I don't know, that um, there's a weird thing that happens if you, if you, and I tried this at the start and it, it didn't work out for me particularly well. If you do phone calls with people for free, sometimes people don't show up. Uh, it's an odd phenomenon, but <clears throat> happened to me quite a lot. Oh, you want to do a phone call? Great. Let's jump on the phone. They don't show up. Um, and there's something about an exchange of energy or money. If you pay for something, you're going to show up, you're going to be prepared, you're going to have done your homework, you're going to have your list of questions, you're going to be ready to go. And that's what I want. I want people who are showing up with like, here's three points on my agenda that I want to tick off. What do you want to talk about? Let's get going. Let's get rocking, right? So there is a fee for it. Um, much like if you spoke to any other counselor or, uh, you know, coach, if you will, because I'm a coach, not a counselor, um, then anyway off we go. Right, enough about that. Um, let's get on to today's topic. Um, so the one thing I wanted to talk about today was I watched this, uh, I'll give some props out. I watched Simon Sinek, um, the author of uh, Start With Why, I think his book is called, but he's probably done a few by now. Um, I saw, came across something randomly the other day on Instagram where he was into getting interviewed by somebody and he was talking about how um, Everything comes at a cost. And it got me thinking. Sorry, I've got to keep up with the uh, the water. I should probably say I'm just going to have a quick drink. Otherwise, you'll be like, where's he gone? Still here. Uh, um, there is nothing we get in life that doesn't come at a cost. There's nothing we get in life that doesn't come at a cost. Um, family, time, relationships, health, energy, trade-offs. If you do one thing, it costs you something else. Now, sometimes these are good trade-offs, right? Uh, it could be um, that you've decided to spend a bit of extra time buying healthier food, um, and which means you can't spend as long at work, and the trade-off is you maybe make a little bit less money, but you've got a healthier body. Great. Got it. Okay, so fundamentally, everything comes at a cost. So if you choose to invest your time somewhere, then there's somewhere else in your life or somebody else's life or your family's life. And I'm going to give you some examples, which is is uh, is bearing the brunt of that cost or is reflective of that activity that you're doing elsewhere. And I think this is an interesting concept. Um, 
to ponder in your own life. So if you want this, you're going to have to pay that for it, right? Might be literally monetary exchange, or it might be time exchange. As we know, money's a wonderful renewable resource that we can create more of in our lives in creative different ways. Time is something we can't create more of. So if you've, you know, squandered years of your life, you can't get it back. You can change moving forward and do something different. Um, as I recently recounted with that trip to the Strathcona Provincial Park, when things are novel, um, they they uh, time seems to go slower. It's like when we're children, everything's new. So t- days drag on for what seems like ever. You know, oh my God, this day's so slow. And then when we're older, we're like, oh, that flew by. I can't remember last week because you do the same thing every day and it's monotonous and groundhogish, and uh, it blends together. So anyway, sometimes you know, as I said, the, the cost might be financially based. So it might be a simple one, like you go to work every every week for 40 to 50 to 60 hours a week, you make a good income. You got a great title, vice president, congratulations, making 80 grand or six figures or whatever the number is. You get career progression, people at work like you. But so all those things are ticking a lot of self-validation boxes and pats on the back and warm and fuzzies. And the cost is you never see your kids and uh, you spend a long time sat in the car going to and from work. You don't have a great relationship with your significant other. In my case, my wife. Um, You don't eat very well. So your health goes downhill. Um, And so anyway, that's the cost, right? I'm telling a story about myself, if you hadn't guessed. But in in many of my my sales careers, I was uh, commuting an hour and plus each way. Um, I was, you know, working very hard and making lots of money and chasing career progression and promotion and more money. Uh, Meanwhile, I left before my kids woke up and I got home after they'd gone to sleep. So I just saw my kids on the weekend. And when I got home and saw my wife, it was, you know, hey, how's it going? And what's for dinner? And then have a couple of glasses of wine and fall asleep with my shirt and tie on on the couch and wake up. Everybody else has gone to bed. I'm like, oh God, I suppose I better go to bed. You know, climb upstairs, go to bed, set your alarm, wake up at six and go and do it all again. That's what I did for many years, many years. So the cost was that missed time, that missed quality time. The cost was my relationship. The cost was my health. What what we know of the long-term effects of that, I don't know because my health is much better now. So hopefully I reversed most of the damage I'd done, but I'm sure there's some which you can't undo. Um, but that was the cost, right? It all added up. Um, and it's interesting because from a work point of view, I didn't really you know, care that much sometimes for the particular product I was selling. It wasn't ethically like, yes, this is the best thing ever. It was just like a means to an end or a way to generate an income. Um, so in that case, the trade-off wasn't worth it. And I didn't recognize that fact until, as you know, go back to episode one, um, I got slapped in the face with anxiety. And uh, you know, eventually, after a long enough time of ignoring the cost that I was bearing, my 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 body, mind, soul told me, Tim, that is absolutely enough of that. Thank you very much. And it's time to make a change in your life. It forced me to make a change. And uh, it took me a while, but I listened to that voice eventually and did start to make changes. And that's obviously a lot of what's documented over the years in this podcast that you followed. Um, and so, you know, the cost... In, in that case, to some extent, or, or could be in a similar way, is that your morals are compromised, right? It's kind of like, um, you know, if you do something which is at odds with your truth, which is at odds with your ethic, ethics and your sort of foundation of what you believe in, then it's going to come at a cost of you not feeling good and you feeling like you're being a fraud or you feeling like you're supporting somebody who isn't doing good things in the world, right? And that's paint that hurts right maybe not day one maybe not day 20 but after a while it hurts it's hurting you under the under the surface deep inside your soul potentially um now you could flip around a lot of this stuff and say right well i'm prepared to live a life of less extravagance or live a life with less money and uh be closer to home and do all the things i want to do right you have a choice there's a choice there in in terms of the cost is the cost worth it um 
But yeah, I think that out of alignment piece is interesting. So if you're doing something which is compromising who you are on a daily basis and thinking over time you can keep doing that and it won't negatively impact you and it's okay because you're just doing it for the money. I got to tell you from experience, it will impact you. Um, Absolutely will impact you. You can't do things which are out of alignment for too long without your respective steering wheel starting to shake, right? Um. So, you know, the, the the relationship component of that is 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 interesting. It's like I've been there myself in the past uh, at work where I'm maintaining fake relationships and pretending to get on with people and pretending to get on with my manager or my boss. Meanwhile, deep down, I know that if I had the choice to speak the absolute truth and say what I really believed, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't make that choice. I wouldn't push that you know, client or partner or somebody into doing that certain thing. It's just not the way I would operate. Would it be as profitable? Maybe not. But that's another thing that comes at a cost, right? Do, what's the most important thing to you? Being as profitable as possible or living a life in alignment that doesn't come at the psychological or emotional or spiritual cost? I don't know. It's, it's kind of crossing a, a crossing a few different barriers there, right? So, the flip side being, could you find a job where you can, you know, make the compensation goals you have, but at the same time do something which is in alignment with who you are and is helping people instead of trying to um, strong arm people into things or, you know, extract every bit of juice out of the lemon without really being totally conscientious about it. So, you know, just a few things to think about. And again, these are just topics thrown out there for you to consider in your own life and, and think about um, you know, are there areas where you are compromising yourself um, and it's coming at a cost? So interesting stuff, right? It's kind of like um, the same could be said for potentially maintaining relationships with you, f- with people that you find that are toxic to you or trigger you a lot. Well, it's my family member, so I can't possibly shut them out. Well, it's a close school friend, so I can't. This person's got you know, totally different worldviews, political, etc. And I just, you know, they trigger me, but they're a friend, so I'll stick it out. And great. Okay, you keep taking one for the team, but, you know, at what cost? At what cost of yourself and your own mental sanity and well-being? It's it's going to be there, you know? Um, and that, again, that could be friends, that could be family. And and the way I look at it is, is that if you are keeping somebody in your life who makes you feel that way, you're also not only out of alignment, but you're also blocking the opportunity to find new friends or new people who may be better in your life or maybe better aligned to who you really are and your real true values and who you really want to be, which is ultimately going to make you feel better. And it's a beautiful upward spiral, not a downward spiral. It makes you better over time. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is like, it's like, Sometimes when I've done this myself, when you're trying to stick to a diet, you know, you, you go to somebody's house, you don't want to offend the host, they offer you a piece of cake, they've offered you a beer. Well, you can make them happy briefly and, and succumb to that peer pressure, if you will. Or you can kind of stand up and make the harder choice and say, listen, I really, I mean, I'm going through this at the moment with a 75 hard, but um, I appreciate the offer, but I'm doing this thing and I'm st- I'm sticking to it. And, um, you know, the the... the there's a cost associated with that. You have the cost of potentially offending the other person. But if you go along with what they're saying, you've got the cost of like, you know, your own health again going out the window while you appease other people. Um, so when you're considering something in your life, I think on each occasion you can stop and say, right, what is the cost associated with this? Negative and positive. Is it worth the time? Is it worth the resources? Is it worth the mental effort? Um, the cost of getting drunk. I think about this one, you know, the, I've said this before, but somebody once said the, the getting drunk is borrowing tomorrow's happiness and using it today. So you, you might be happy for a minute, but tomorrow you're going to feel sadder because you've stolen happiness and pulled it forward into another day. Is it worth it? I don't know. That's totally up to you. I now probably haven't had a drink. Well, I know I haven't had a drink for 50 days in my last 50 days. It's probably the longest time since I was, you know, a young man. Um, so it's been a while. Don't really miss it. Don't really care. But it's because just because I'm focused on this current goal at the moment. But is it worth it? What's the cost 
you know, when you're younger and you're in your 20s, you don't really care about the cost. You just do it anyway. Well, at least I did. Now I think, well, do I really want to feel hungover for a few days? Eh, probably not worth it. And uh, on you go. Um, but maybe sometimes it is worth the cost. If you went to, you know, this, if you went to an amazing trip to Vegas and, you know, just having a, a really well planned out time and a few drinks were involved, then maybe it would be worth it. I don't know. Um, you'll have to take me on a trip to Vegas. We'll find out. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I've been through another one recently, just, uh, hydrating here one sec. Been through another one recently where, see, that's the benefit of interviewing people, by the way, if you're interviewing somebody else, you can sip water while they're talking, but <clears throat> when it's just me, it goes quiet. I've been through this, um, been investing recently and looking at different types of investing, but investing is an interesting one because, you can invest in, you know, you could throw your money in an index linked fund, index linked to the S&P 500, which are the largest 500 companies in the United States. And uh, if you look at history over the last 100 years, that's performed very well. I don't know what the annual average is, 8 or 9%. You can do well. You do that, put your money in there, wake up in 20 years, you probably made a lot of money. Or you can actively day trade the other end of the spectrum where you're trying to swing trade or buy, buy low, sell high in the same day and looking at, you know very intricate charts and graphs and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that would be super highly stressful. So <clears throat> when I think of the cost in that one, I'm like, well, the potential upside in volatile trading is much better. You could make 100% a year um, instead of, I'm just using hypothetical numbers, but you could make 100% a year instead of 9% a year. Um, but the cost is you don't sleep at night and you're worried about your investments all the time and it consumes you 24 hours a day and you look at the futures market before you go to bed, you wake up in the morning before the market opens and read the press and read CNBC and listen to all the people tell stories about how the market's about to crash and, you know, ask me how I know this. Uh, <laughs> but it comes at a cost, right? It comes at a cost of your mental health, your well-being, your sleep, ultimately. And at that point, it's not worth the extra percentage returns because you're going to not live as long, probably. So these are some good examples to sort of think about. So again, when you're thinking of something in your life, think about what's the cost associated with this. It could be a move across the country. It could be a new relationship. It could be taking on more responsibility at work or changing careers, which may be a good thing or not, depending on your situation, right? Yes, you got the new job, you got the raise, but what's the additional expectations in terms of that role? Is it worth the cost? You know, in sales, sometimes being an individual contributor is way better than being the manager because you can actually make more money um, there's a saying that sometimes the closer you are to the sale, the more you should be compensated. Um, not always the case, but it is the case in some industries. And uh, so as a manager, you could be managing all these different people and, you know, human uh, resource issues and that sort of stuff versus an individual contributor. A, you can make more money. B, you've only got yourself to worry about and you can control your own actions and your own destiny. And so there you go. There's something to think about. Should you take the, should you take the promotion or not? Um, if you want to get up earlier to exercise more, uh, you have to have an extra hour in bed the night before. What's the cost of that? Well, you don't watch as much Netflix. Okay. Well, that's probably a good trade-off. I'll take that one. Um, but I always think about these things in terms of you've, you've heard the analogy before, where if you start with an empty jar and you have to fill it up with goals and responsibilities in life, you always start with the big rocks first, right? You don't fill it up with sand and then try and put rocks in afterwards. You put the big rocks in the jar. And then as you add the small bits and then the sand, the sand will fill in all the areas that are left. That's an efficient way to do it. So when you think of the costs associated with your life and how that works, you can start with the big items. So relationship, your significant relationship or relationships, friends and family. Are any of them coming at a cost? What's the cost? Is it worth changing it? What might happen if you change it? The job, the work you do, the industry you're in, is there a cost associated with that? Do you work night shifts and that really upsets your sleep and, and on and on? Um, or are you working for a company that compromises your integrity from an ethics point of view? Could be anything. I'm just pulling stuff out of the air. Where you live, the area you live in, does it trigger you because it's too quiet and too rural and scary or it's too loud and too noisy and it's the city or you don't like the temperature or... You don't like the local government or whatever. Um, is there a cost there? Is there a cost with your hobbies? Are they too time consuming? You've invested a lot of time. You've got the sunk cost bias. I've been doing this for years. This is how people think of me. This is my identity. Meanwhile, the cost is you can't allow yourself to do anything else because you're so deeply into the thing you're doing. The weird actually analogy, not analogy, the weird story for myself that comes to mind when I think of that one is I used to brew my own beer. It started quite innocently with a love for beer. 
uh, and I would uh, drink a lot of beer. And then I started, oh, somebody said, oh, I don't know where I about, heard about it from first, but somebody said, oh, you can get these kits where you just like, you know, put the yeast in and ferment it in a barrel. And 20 days later, you then put it into bottles with a bit of sugar and carbonate it. And then you got beer to drink. You can get different flavors. You can get stouts and pale ales and IPAs and pilsners and all this stuff. So I started making these. And then, you know, this is so aligned to my... Uh, personality that i love like i love making things and giving things to people i'm making sourdough bread again lately and my kids love eating that um anyway so i started making beer and then i was like oh, i wonder what the next step is oh then you can get kits where you can not only get the wort as they call it which is unfermented beer but you can then get different types of hops to put in it and different types of yeast to ferment it with oh, interesting different tastes and flavors and then I said, right, well, these batches are small. What if I do bigger batches? So then I started buying old kegs on the internet and refurbishing them. And then I got a fridge and made a kegerator where I had different taps on the front. And I was like, well, just standard carbonated beer is not good enough. Let's do some uh, nitro beers, like Guinness style beers. So then I bought a different type of gas tank and different type of tap for that. And I got a fermentation freezer. I eventually ended up, anyway, end of the story is I got these massive, this massive rig with these barrels on and I'm brewing huge quantities of beer every week and friends would come over. We'd have great times. We'd just drink like unlimited beer. Um, and, uh, but the problem was is it was coming at the cost of my health because I was drinking a lot. Uh, and it was coming at the cost of my family because in order to the time consumption, involved in brewing beer is for anybody who's done it you know what i'm talking about but if you do it if you if you're doing it to the extent i was where i was going right back to grinding my own grains and uh and steeping them which is called mashing and then uh, boiling them up and putting hops in i started growing my own hops outside like i probably went straight down that deep rabbit hole um but yeah i would get up at like two in the morning to start my brewing day and I'd probably finish at 5 p.m. So my whole day was gone and I was super tired by the end of it uh, and I was drinking a lot. So anyway, it seemed to start out quite innocently, but this is kind of, the, this is probably why I'm doing a podcast for six years because I start out thinking, I've got a good idea. And then, <laughs> and then where does it end? Where is the end goal? Um, definitely like the theme of my life where I start things and then just master them and then yeah, carry on or give up and move on to something else. But anyway, that's an example of the cost for the beer experiment was at one point I was thinking of opening a brewery. And then at some point, I think around the same times as my anxiety, life-changing epiphanies, I was like, hmm, health, travel, you know, freedom, brewery, <laughs> beer, that one doesn't seem to fit, doesn't seem to fit in the mold. So I stopped doing it as much. And, uh, Still love beer for a while. Don't really at the moment, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of a good example of the cost associated with that hobby specifically. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I've enjoyed making it and it's got me thinking. Sometimes I just, again, I see that thing on Instagram or somewhere and I'm like, hmm, that really gets my attention. Sometimes I think it's maybe because I need to hear it in my life at the moment. Um, and that's why... I want to share it with you. So anyway, if you're coming up to a big decision or you want to do a bit of reevaluation, consider the cost and, and ponder on that and see where you come out. Let me know if you have any questions on that or what conclusions you might come to. Um, if you've enjoyed today's podcast, please go to wherever you consume this and leave a uh, lovely review. Uh, Apple or um, Spotify or wherever else you can leave reviews. Leave me a review. Massively appreciate it. Love reading them. Or you can email me as well if you want. But the reviews, other people see them. So they are. we are in a review society where people do care about what other people say. Um, and remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.